Hey, how's it going out there, my friends? This is Josh with Desert Gardens Homestead. Welcome back. So one of the keys to permaculture and the principles of permaculture are the use of support plants. Uh, the more support plants in your landscape, the better. The support plants would be used primarily as support plants for other plants in the landscape. So you could use those to mulch with or to fertilize with or as companion plants. There's so many uses for support type plants, uh, pollinator attractors, uh, you name it. But the uh, support plants really really make a huge difference in the landscape, especially with the more uh, trees and plants that you have, the larger the space, uh, especially with fertilization, to have some support plants that are very nutritious, green manure type plants, uh, because if I was to try to uh, fertilize this landscape, being about two acres, I would easily probably be in, you know, maybe $500, uh, you know, each time to fertilize, which would be very costly for me. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things, it would just be a burden. And so when you get into uh, permaculture or natural farming, uh, those principles where you rely less on big agriculture, less on uh, manufactured products, more on the natural uh, back to Eden style gardening, you really wanna have these support type plants within your landscape that you can go to on a regular basis to, uh, to fertilize with or to use as fodder, chop and drop, green manure, um, compost starters, you name it, jatum uh, ingredients. Uh, these support plants make a huge difference. And so today I just want to show you three support plants that I've got primarily for fertilization and how I go about using these plants within the landscape. So stick with me. And before us I have common comfrey. So this is the uh, seeded variety. And so I've used Bocking 14 in the past, but Bocking 14 and uh, Bocking 4 seem to struggle in the heat, uh, whereas Common Comfrey uh, seems to do just fine. But this is a fabulous green manure. This is a healing herb. There are just so many uses for comfrey with salves, uh, just you know, medicinally, internally, uh, with digestion, with stomach, you name it. Uh, this is just an excellent plant. But besides the healing properties of this plant, it also has excellent uh, fertilization properties. And so if you look at the screen I'm showing the NPK values and it is chock full of both macro and micronutrients um, just all the various minerals and it is uh, you know it's a dynamic accumulator and so it mines up all those minerals from the earth and puts those into the leaves and so this is one of my favorite go-to green manures and I'm gonna be taking some of these leaves and using them in my homemade fertilizer the next green manure uh, tree or plant that I want to make use of with the leaves is the Mexican sunflower, the Tithonia diversifolia. And this is a fabulous support plant to have within the landscape. Not only is it an excellent pollinator attractor by uh, attracting monarch butterflies in the fall, but it is also a phenomenal green manure. Pound for pound, the leaves of this uh, plant are just as potent as chicken manure. So it is just a phenomenal green manure, probably one of the more potent ones out there, probably right behind the Moringa or right next to it. But this is just an awesome uh, green manure leaf. And if you look at the screen, I'm showing the MPK values for it. Uh, but this is a phenomenal fodder, but it is a excellent, excellent amendment to use uh, for compost starters, for uh, jatum and in this case I'm going to be using it to make some liquid fertilizer today. So ingredient number two, the Mexican sunflower, Tithonia diversifolia, the dynamic accumulator that is just a gorgeous, gorgeous bush here in the arid Sonoran Desert and if you don't have one of these you need to get one. And last but certainly not least, probably the most important out of the three, my number one all-time favorite green manure support plant for the arid Sonoran Desert Zone 9A is the Moringa. And these are just, you just can't beat the Moringa as far as versatility, as far as use, as far as the nutritional. This is the most nutritious green in the world uh, by many claims. And this has just done wonders for so many people. Uh, fabulous fodder. I use it consistently, as you can see, right next to the chicken run. So my chickens eat it, my goats eat it, everything eats the Moringa plant. And so this is just the number one plant. If you can grow a Moringa, even if it's an annual, I would highly recommend this because the leaves are just so nutritional. There's so many uses for them. I personally use the leaves, I dry them out, and then I'll just grind them down and use them as seasoning on all my food. So we also consume the Moringa here. And here are the inputs that I'll be using today. This will be a pretty small batch. Usually if I make this, 
Uh, gen in a general sense, I'll use quite a bit more than this, but this is just for illustration purposes. But I've got a good handful of each one. For the Moringa, I'm just going to strip those leaves down so I don't want any of the uh, small limbs within the uh, blender. And I'm just going to go ahead and use some filtered water out of the refrigerator, get this blended up, and show you the mix. And this is the finished product, my friend. So I went ahead and blended it up here. As you can see, it is just jam-packed full of life, all the bubbles within the mixture. And so what I like to do is I like to mix this with unchlorinated water, and that will just aid with any of the microbes that survive the blending of the mix. And so with this, I've got it in just a common cup here. But this you could uh, mix just like you would any other liquid fertilizer, maybe you know one or two tablespoons per gallon of water. And so if you look at the, the fish emulsion that you would buy from a big box store, you know, that one uh, jug that's, you know, probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks at this point, um, this is completely free. And this would be way more potent than that fish emulsion would be. And so with this, I've got a cup here. And so this would probably be valued, you know, 10 to $15 maybe, uh, give or take. But it's just a super potent uh, liquid fertilizer that would be jam-packed full of everything your plants would need. And the greatest part about it was I didn't have to spend $20, $30, $40 for the jug. And I can make this whenever I want. It only took me about five minutes. All right. Well, back outside here, I've got my watering can full of uh, unchlorinated water. And I've got my uh, fabulous, fabulous green manure. As you can see, it is certainly green manure. Uh, bottoms up. I'm going to go ahead and mix some of this in, just eyeballing it. It's going to be a little juicy. There you go. I actually took the... Um, the piece off just so that if there were some chunks, which there was here, I didn't blend it terribly long. I don't mind it being a little chunky, but uh, I've got it within the water. I'm just going to give it maybe just a slight mix here. And let's go over to my plant nursery and get something, a special treat. Okay, well, I found my victim here, actually my award winner. Let's put it that way. This is a, oh, about a seven foot avocado here in my plant nursery. Uh, really isn't the happiest guy. Wants some fertilization. So... Let me, if I could maybe remove some of that wandering Jew, it would probably help him out too. But let me give him, and just take a look at the color of this fertilizer. It's nice and green. Very, very good stuff. And it is just going to be full of everything this plant would need, plus more. It's got the best of all worlds here with the Mexican sunflower, the common comfrey, as well as the moringa. So this is going to be one happy camper. I'm not really quite sure what kind of a legume tree this is. It was given to me. I really don't know what it is, but uh, it's a really neat plant or tree. And so I just want to give it a little treat here. And after I drench this little plant, just take a look at all the green particles, green manure at the base of this plant right on top of the mulch. And so every time that I go to water this plant hereafter, these green particles will be pushed down and those will continue to break down and feed this plant. And as I've stated before, here's my compost pile. This is actually an awesome compost starter as well. So I hope that this uh, information today will help you out and maybe motivate you to put a couple more support plants within the landscape, especially if you're lacking in the fertilization type support plants. Uh, you really can't beat this fertilizer. It's one of the more potent fertilizers that you could make on site, uh, organic fertilizer. It just has so many uses. You know, you could also use it as a foliar uh, spray. Uh, just so many benefits for it, you know, for seedlings, uh, starts, you name it. And so I would highly recommend to go ahead and play with it, see the benefits of using it. And the best part about it is it's completely free. So once you have the plants, why not make use of what you're already growing on site to uh, further your property, further the succession, and further the fertility and the abundance. So if you found anything of value in this video today, I would certainly appreciate you smashing that like button, as well as subscribing if you haven't already and sharing the content. And once again, I certainly appreciate you stopping in and checking out this video as well as this channel and have a great day. God bless you. Take care.